Welcome to this amazing course on Python programming for complete beginners. I'm Ranga Karnam. I'm the founder of In 28 Minutes and I'm excited to be your instructor for this course. Python is one of the top programming languages in the world today. It's known for its simplicity, its readable code and a rich ecosystem of libraries and frameworks. Python is used to build a variety of applications, web applications, data science applications, machine learning applications, and a lot more. If you're good at Python, you can become a versatile and in-demand developer. There are a lot of job opportunities for Python programmers as you can build a variety of applications. However, becoming a great Python programmer is a little difficult, especially beginners find the first steps very difficult. There is a steep learning curve. When you get started with programming, you need to understand a lot of new concepts. You need to understand the syntax of how to write your programs. And you also need to understand programming logic. In addition, you need to install software. You need to install Python locally. You need to install your IDE. And you need to solve syntax errors. When you're starting off, you'll make a lot of mistakes. These errors can be frustrating. A lot of times, you might have difficulty in getting help as well. And, and most importantly, programming takes time to learn. Staying motivated is difficult. Maintaining enthusiasm and motivation can be tough. I've helped more than a million learners start their technology journeys. So I understand these difficulties. And that's why we spent a lot of time creating a very, very simple path to learn Python programming. We have created a simple path using a hands-on approach. And we have made the entire course a fun ride where you'd be solving almost 200 awesome coding exercises and hundreds of awesome puzzles. In this course, we'll be making use of the Udemy's coding exercise platform. And that means you do not need to install either Python or an IDE. You can learn everything on the browser. In addition, you will get excellent support in Q&A. If you have a question about the course, Go ahead and post it in the Q&A and our team would answer your question. Our goal is to make it really, really easy for you to start your Python journey. So the question is, how do you put your best foot forward? Learning Python can be tricky. There is a lot of new terminology, concepts and syntax. You are human. I am human. And as humans, we tend to forget things. If I'm learning something new today, it is highly probable that I'll forget it in a few days time. How do you improve your chances of remembering things for a long time? Here are a few recommendations based on my experience. Number one is active learning. Think and take notes. Whenever you see something interesting in the course, write it down. Number two is to get hands on and try solving all the exercises in the course. The third recommendation is to review the presentation once in a while. Every few days after completing a few sections, take a step back, review the presentation, review the videos and think about what you have learned. The more you are actively involved with the learning and the more you review, the higher the chances for you to remember things for a long time. And what is our approach to building a great course? We are taking a four pronged approach. We have a number of learning lab videos where we introduce the Python concepts with a lot of hands-on examples. In addition, we have a number of coding exercises where you would get to solve a lot of problems. What's more, we have also created coding exercise solution videos where you will watch me solve the exercises. In addition, we have also created a number of amazing quizzes to reinforce your learning. By using this four-pronged approach, we think you will not only have fun while learning, but also remember things for a long time. Now, before we move into the next step, a couple of important recommendations. Number one, this is not a race. Take your time, focus on understanding things really well, and do not hesitate to replay videos when needed. The second, but the most important recommendation is to have fun. Learning Python can get really tricky, and that's why we invested a lot of time to try and make this course really interactive, really hands-on, and making sure that you'll have a lot of fun while you learn. I'm really excited to help you learn Python, and I'll see you in the next step. Are you ready to get started with Python programming? Let's look at the objectives of this specific section. The goal of this specific section is to help you run your first Python program. We will also enable you to learn 
printing text in python we'll be making use of the print function to output text to print text we'll also understand the importance of quotes for text data whenever you have some piece of text you need to put quotes around them so we'll also understand why quotes are needed and what are the options that you have in addition we'll also play with a lot of basic math operations we'll be playing with multiplication addition subtraction division exponentiation and remainder operators in this specific section we'll also learn about built in functions we'll talk about what is a built in function and we'll look at some of the built in functions which are present in python print absolute power max and min and what's more we will apply all these in practical exercises now if you don't really understand some of the terminology used in here for example printing or exponentiation or remainder or built in functions do not worry by the end of this section you will not only understand these concepts but also apply them in practical exercises are you ready to get started with learning python i am ranga karnam and i'm really really excited to get you started i'll see you in the next step hooray you can do the entire course directly on udemy you don't really need an ide or you don't need to install python locally you can use the udemy interface and do all the learning labs and coding exercises right now let's get started with learning labs we have a number of learning labs in this specific course and each learning lab has instructions you have a lot of instructions that help you to learn all the concepts with a lot of code examples we also have videos where we will review these instructions as well in addition you also have a practice window you can write code and see the output in the practice window by clicking run code so in the next learning lab you would see a interface like this you have instructions on the left and you have a practice window on the right you can go ahead and copy code in or you can type code in so you can write some code in here and you can directly execute the code right here you can say run code and this should show the output of your program right in here now what are the advantages of learning labs the thing is you can read notes and write code in side by side windows everything is made really easy for you you do not need an ide or a python installation everything is very very simple with learning labs now before you get into your first learning lab a couple of tips number 1 you'd be able to copy notes from your learning labs so for example if you like this then you can go ahead and say right click and copy and you can paste it anywhere you'd want so you can take notes by copying information from these learning labs and the next tip is not to worry about run tests for now if you go to any learning lab you would see run tests also present in here for now ignore run tests don't worry about it we'll talk about it when we get to exercises For now all that you need to do is to write code and say run code. So you have all the instructions in here. You can copy code and paste it in here and you can run it by using run code. That's all you would need to know to make the best use of all the learning labs that we have created for you. I'm really really excited to help you get started with learning labs and I'll see you in the next step. Welcome to your first learning lab video. In a learning lab video, I'll explain concepts from a learning lab. i will also run code examples from a learning lab after watching this video you will get an opportunity to play with the learning lab in the next lecture what are we going to learn in this specific learning lab video we will get started with printing text we will start diving into printing text one of the most basic yet important tasks in programming how can you print text we will make use of a python's built in function called print so the way you would actually print a simple message is by doing something like this what you can do is do a right click on this copy or here you can do a right click and paste so we are copying the code print open parenthesis within double quotes we have hello python and the close parenthesis now what i would do is go ahead and say run code what will this piece of code do this piece of code will print the text hello python to the output so you can see the result in here it's showing hello python in user logs so the output is 
hello python so this function call over here the print function call is printing hello python to the console now you might be wondering there is a lot of syntax in here there are a lot of things that can go wrong what are the things that can go wrong number 1 you can forget double quotes if you forget double quotes then python will not know that this is text and it will think that this is something called a variable if you do a run code right now you will see that you will get an error invalid syntax so you can see that python is unable to print this the other mistake you can do is let's put back the double quotes so i'm putting a double quote here and a double quote at the end just before the last parenthesis and i'm removing the parenthesis right now so this parenthesis i'm removing and this parenthesis i'm removing so the second mistake is that you can forget parenthesis even if you forget parenthesis and you'd say run code python would complain python would say error missing parenthesis in call to print so if you want to print text all that you need to do is to put a piece of text within parenthesis and call the print function and if you do a run code now the syntax looks very good so it will print hello python nice hello python is shown in here now a quick tip when you encounter any error don't panic so if you forget the parenthesis in here for example and you do and you do a run code you'd get an error whenever you get an error don't panic what you need to do is to carefully read the error message it will usually tell you what went wrong and where the error occurred it's saying missing parenthesis in call to print so it's saying print with print you need parenthesis so you need a parenthesis like this so whenever you are doing programming you will make mistakes that's a given and you will see a lot of error messages when you see error messages don't panic spend some time carefully reading the error message and the error message would usually contain the clue to solve the problem now a few things for you to try you can print your name for example i will print ranga so i am printing ranga within double quotes ranga and this would print ranga okay ranga is now printed next print a famous quote print some favorite quote of yours so print to be or not to be that is the question run code nice you can see the text printed in here so in this learning lab we are learning to print some text out to the console and we are making use of the print function to the print function we are sending a piece of text the piece of text is in between double quotes and whatever is in between double quotes is being printed to the console that's what we have learnt in this specific learning lab now before we end this learning lab video let's talk about a fun fact python is actually not named after the snake python it's actually named after the british comedy series monty python's flying circus the creator of python hiro von rossum he wanted to make the language fun and playful to use and that's why he named the language after the british comedy series monty python's flying circus isn't that interesting congratulations on completing your first learning lab video in the next lecture you will get a chance to play with this learning lab so go ahead play with the learning lab and i'll see you in the next step from learning labs let's move towards coding exercises how do you become a great programmer practice practice and practice and we have created a number of coding exercises to help you practice each of these coding exercises would have instructions a clear problem statement and it would also have hints hints to help you solve the problem in addition there is also a solution explanation the entire solution for the problem is explained 
and we also have a solution video where you will watch me solve the problem now what are the advantages of doing this you get a lot of practice the other advantage is that your solution is automatically checked if you write code we have a number of tests which are written in the background which would check if your code is working or not in addition you'll also improve some of the important skills as a programmer reading and documentation when you become a programmer you will get a requirements document and you need to read the requirements document and solve problems based on that so being able to read the requirements is very very important and that's what these coding exercises enable you to do we have a clear problem statement explaining what you should do in addition we also have a lot of documentation of the code to help you understand the code further in the next step you will see a test exercise to help you get familiar with the udemy exercise interface so you would see something very very similar to this in the next exercise all that you need to do is to read the instructions in here and follow them so the first instruction is to click run test so if you go ahead here and click run test what would happen you would see that the test is failing why is the test failing the test is failing because we are expecting it to have hello world not hello world 2 so we are expecting hello space world and if you now go ahead and say run test you would see that the test would succeed if you see any failures at this point make sure that you are exactly having this string hello world within double quotes h is caps w is caps and between them there's a space if you have any trouble you can also copy this from here and paste it in here and say run test you would see that the test would succeed there are a lot of features in this udemy interface which you can explore let's start with hints once you click run test a few times you'd be able to see hints as well so all the hints that will help you to solve the problem will be described in here also enabled after a few run tests would be solution explanation the entire solution will be explained to you over here another important feature in here is the reset code so if you do a reset code the entire code will be deleted and your solution will be reset if i say reset in here the solution would go to the starting state at the start we had hello world 2 that's where it would go to now you can modify the code and say run test so hints give you additional information solution explanation gives you explanation about the solution and reset button helps you to reset the exercise to the starting state in addition if you want to completely focus on code then you can click this button which is present in here which would take you full screen you can write the code and you can again click this and then see the instructions if you want this button in here also helps you to toggle instructions so when you click this instructions are hidden and when you click this again instructions are shown this interface might look a little tricky at the start but as you start playing with it you will see that you will like it a lot i've been playing with this udemy coding exercises interface for the last year or so and i love all the features that are provided in here i feel this is a great way to practice coding I think coding exercises on Udemy are a great way to learn so I would recommend you to go ahead and do all the coding exercises. Are you ready to get started with Udemy coding exercises? I'll see you in the next step. Let's get started with your first real Python coding exercise. Hello world. In this exercise your task is to write a simple Python program that displays the greeting hello world on the console. Instructions are very very clear. Use the print function to display messages on the console. Inside the print function write this string hello world ensure that there is no leading or trailing spaces in the output so the solution should be pretty simple right so print and you can copy this string in here copy this and paste this in here and when we are doing an exercise the first thing that we would do is to say run code run code will actually show the output to you so the program output will be shown to you so you can see that it's hello world that's good so you can see that the expected output and the actual output matches and now you can go ahead and click run test there are a lot of tests that we have written in the background which would check if the output is as expected and you can see that for this specific exercise there is one test which is passing 
Congratulations. Now, if you had any problems, what I would recommend you to do is to copy the code from here and paste it here and say run test. You would see that all the tests should succeed. The typical problems would be if you have an additional space here or additional space here, or you have uh, you are missing a parenthesis, for example, something like this. This would be probably some of the common errors. So make sure that you don't have any additional spaces. Make sure that you have the parenthesis closed and make sure that you have the string enclosed within double quotes. That should ensure that the test would succeed. Congratulations on solving your first Udemy coding exercise. And I'll see you in the next step. Welcome to the next learning lab, playing with operators and expressions. In this specific learning lab, we will have fun with operators and expressions. We will try and learn how to do basic math operations in Python. Let's start with doing something really, really simple. Let's try and print 5 multiplied by 5. So this is the code I'm copying in from here. So print 5 into 5. That's the one which I'm printing in here. So over here, you can see that I'm using x. So 5 x 5. And we would want to run this piece of code. I would say run code. So I'm executing run code in here. Let's see what would happen. Oops, it says invalid syntax. Perhaps you forgot a comma. So it's saying syntax error. Why are we getting syntax error? This is because x over here is not a right symbol for multiplication in Python. The right symbol for multiplication in Python is actually star. So the star which is present in here, the correct operator for multiplication is star. So if I go ahead and remove this X and replace it with a star or an asterisk, this is what is multiplication operator in Python. So what we are doing is print open parenthesis 5 asterisk 5 and close parenthesis and now I would go ahead and say run code what would happen yep this is what would print 25 in here so 5 multiplied by 5 is 25 and that is what is printed in the logs right now that's pretty cool so star is one of the operators that is supported in Python this would do multiplication. So an asterisk is a multiplication operator. Now, what other operators are present in Python? We have a small list of them in here. Let's play with them right now. So we have done five star five. You can do five star six or whatever you'd want to do. Similar to that, you have five plus six. So what is five plus six? What does it do? This would print 11, which is addition. Right, you also have subtraction, which is 5 minus 6. If you do run code right now, you would see minus 1 being printed. The thing is, there is a division operator as well. So let's try and do 10 by 2. So this is what is called a forward slash. So a forward slash is the division operator in Python. So print 10 slash 2. And we can go ahead and say run code. And 5.0 is the output in here. So you can do division. Uh, there is also a power operator. So if you do a 10 star star, so it's 10 asterisk asterisk 2. This calculates 10 to the power of 2, which is 10 multiplied by 10, which is 100. So let's do run code and see what output is printed in here. Yep, you can see that 100 is printed. Now, instead of 10 star star 2, if I do 10 star star 3, try and guess the output. It would be 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10. So that's three tens multiplied with each other. That's basically 1000. So let's do run code and let's see what would be the output which is printed. Yep. So you can try and guess what would be the output when you do a 10 star star 5. What would be the output? It should be pretty easy to guess. It's 100,000. So star star is the power of operator and the last operator which we'll be looking at right now is 
modulus. So if you do a 10 modulus 5. So this is kind of the percentage symbol. On the keyboard, this is percentage symbol. So 10 percentage or modulus 5. Do you want to guess what this does? I'll try and run the code. What do you think will be the output? The output is 0. I'll give you another example. Try and guess. So 10 mod 4. Run code. It prints 2. Modulus actually prints the remainder when you divide this number with this number. So when you divide 10 with 4, you'd get a reminder of 2. So 4 multiplied by 2 is 8 and it leaves a reminder of 2. So 10 minus 8 is 2 and that is what is printed. However, if you put 8 in here, 8 is a multiple of 4. So when you divide 8 by 4, there would not be any reminder. What would you think would be the output here if I do a run code? Try and guess. Yep, it's easy. It's 0. So what you are talking about in this specific step are the different operators in Python. We started with multiplication. We looked at addition. Minus is subtraction. Slash or forward slash is division operator. And star star is the power of operator. And this percentage is the remainder also called the modulus operator. It gives you the remainder when the number on the left hand side is divided by the number on the right hand side. Now we looked at a number of operations until now. In an operation like 5 asterisk 6 or 8 modulus 4 or 5 plus 6, the numbers in here 5, 6, 8, 4, these are all called operands. So operands are nothing but the numbers on which you are performing operations. So 8 here, 4, both of these are operands. So operands are nothing but the things which you are operating on. And operator is the operation that you are performing. Over here, star is an operator. And if I go further up, over here, plus is an operator. Minus here is an operator. Over here, division or the forward slash is an operator. Over here, star star is an operator. So whenever you have something like this, 8 modulus 4, 8 and 4 are operands and percentage is the operator. This entire thing which you have in here is called an expression. So this entire 8 mod 4 or 5 plus 6 or 5 minus 6, this is called an expression. As it says in here, expressions are the phrases of Python math. Whenever you do a calculation, you are writing a expression. And in an expression, you have operators and operands as well. And the awesome thing is that you can mix operators as well. So you can do something like this. For example, I can say print 5 plus 5 plus 5. What would happen? I'll do run. So I'll actually remove this piece of code from here and say run code. What do you think will be the output right now? Yep, it's 15. 5 added to 5. Another 5 is added at the end, which is 15. Now let's try this. 5 plus 5 star 5. What do you think will be the output? Try and guess it right now. Try and guess it, what would be the output? The output is 30. Why is the output 30? The way it is being executed is, first, 5 is being multiplied by 5. So, 5 multiplied by 5 is 25, and 5 is added. If you execute it the other way, for example, if plus is executed first, so it would be 5 plus 5, which is 10, multiplied by 5, which is 50. That's not the way this expression is being executed. The way this expression is being executed is multiplication is being executed first and then addition. Why? The reason is because of something called precedence. In Python and in mathematics, 
certain operators have precedence over other operators in this example your asterisk or the multiplication operator has a precedence over the plus or the addition operator and that's why 5 star 5 or 5 asterisk 5 5 multiplied by 5 is executed first and then the addition is performed now if you'd want to do something like 5 plus 5 first what you can do is you can add additional parenthesis so i can go in and say add a parenthesis here and add a parenthesis here so within parenthesis i am putting 5 plus 5 and at the end i am doing a multiplication so what would happen now is this would be executed first 5 plus 5 and then the result is multiplied by 5 let's do a run code right now let's go ahead and run code what do you expect to see yep 50 right so what we are talking about in here is the precedence of operators until now in the specific learning lab we started with looking at some of the operators in python we looked at asterisk plus minus division operator power of operator and the modulus or the remainder operator which is percentage we also talked about the fact that this specific thing is called an expression and in this expression 5 and 6 are operands and star is an operator we can mix and match operators as well and when you do something like this precedence of operators is important over here multiplication operator has higher precedence than the addition operator and that's why multiplication is done first and addition is done after that and if you'd want to override precedence what you can do is to put everything in parenthesis over here we are putting 5 plus 5 in parenthesis and therefore this will be executed first and the result is multiplied by 5 at this point there are a few things i would recommend you to try number one experiment with different operators so try and play around with the operators you have in here so we have a list of operators in here so try and play around with them and see what you can do with them the other thing i would recommend you to do is to create complex expressions over here i've created one complex expression right you can try and create complex expressions like that and see what would happen so those are a couple of things that i would recommend you to try before going into the next exercise now we would also want to have a fun fact in this specific step if you see in our examples over here we are using hash at the end right so if i have a hash in here hash multiply so what we are doing in here is print five asterisk six and at the end i'm putting a hash followed by multiply now you might be wondering what is this hash over here if you look at it hash multiply right if i run this code what would happen it's just printing 5 asterisk 6 or the result when 5 is multiplied by 6. This code over here is not being executed at all. Let's say I put some piece of code in here. Instead of saying multiply, I put print 5 plus 6. What do you think will happen? So will this result in an output? Let's check that out. Oops, no. It's not getting executed i'll also take this like i'll take this and i'll put it on the first line so i'm putting a hash here followed by some code i'm saying five plus six let's say run code will that get executed fingers crossed you can see that only this line is getting executed this this thing is not getting executed at all hash in python stands for a comment Comments are lines of text in your code that are not executed by the Python interpreter. If you want to explain what we are doing in here, you can add a comment. So I can say this is multiply. And over here I can say we are trying out various Python operators. So if you want to explain what you are doing, in that kind of a scenario you can make use of comments comments start with a hash if the first character on the line is a hash then entire line is a comment if you are adding a hash in between of a line 
So over here you have a statement followed by a hash. The characters after hash are what are part of the comment. When you add comments, if somebody reads your code in future, it will be easier to understand. The code which we write will be maintained over a number of years. And therefore, your code should be easy to understand. Comments are one of the ways you can make your code easy to understand. Over here, you can see that this is a single line comment. We are starting the line with a hash. So the entire line over here is a comment. Over here, we are saying print hello world and followed by a hash character. So this is a comment which we are adding in after a statement. This is what is called a inline comment. So that's the fun fact for this specific learning lab. And last but not the least, remember that programming is like learning a new spoken language. Let's say you already know a specific language, for example, English, and you're trying to learn a new language. For example, you're trying to learn Spanish or French. You know that it will be really, really difficult, especially the first few days you will face a lot of difficulties. So you will face a lot of challenges in the first few days. But if you persist, if you keep practicing, and if you are curious about the new language, you can start speaking the new language very well. And that's the same with programming as well. Programming is like learning a new spoken language. It might seem challenging at first, but with practice and by having a lot of curiosity, you will start speaking the Python programming language fluently. So I would recommend you to keep experimenting, keep learning, and most importantly, keep having fun. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. Welcome to the solution for the Python coding exercise, print number of minutes in a day. In this exercise, you are required to write a Python program that calculates and prints the total number of minutes in a day. There are 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day. Your task is to calculate the total number of minutes in a day by multiplying the number of minutes in an hour by the number of hours in a day. Your program should print the result as well. And there are no specific inputs for this specific task. And the output should be a single integer, the total number of minutes in the day, which is 1440. So what we need to do is to write an expression that multiplies 60 by 24. And we would want to print the result of this expression using the print function. As this is one of the first exercises, what we have done is we have actually went ahead and also given an example solution in here. So the solution for this specific exercise should be very, very easy, right? So in a day, there are 24 hours, right? 24 hours in a day and in an hour, there are 60 minutes. So 24 into 60 would give us the total number of minutes in a specific day. And now I would want to calculate this result and print it as well. And because I would want to print it, I would say print open parenthesis and the entire expression 24 and 60 are operands star or asterisk is the multiplication operator. We would want to, we would want to do the calculation and print the result. Let's go ahead and run the test. So if you run the tests, what would happen? The tests are succeeding. The test checks if 1440 is printed out to the console. Now, if you had problems with the specific thing, what are the things that can go wrong, right? So let's first look at the parenthesis. If you do not have parenthesis, this will not work. If you do a run test right now, what would happen? Try and guess. Yep. It's saying missing parenthesis in call to print. You're making a function call and therefore you need to have parenthesis. So that's one mistake you might be making. Another mistake you might be making is to put this within double quotes. If you put this in double quotes, what would happen? This would become a piece of text 
this is not a calculation anymore if it's outside double quotes it becomes a expression a calculation however if you put it within double quotes it becomes a piece of text whatever is in here would be printed so if i do run test what do you think will happen it says hey i'm expecting the output to be 1440 1440 however what is being printed is 24 into 60 so this is what is being printed out i am expecting 1440 so this is another mistake you might be making and another possible mistake is if you'd actually print this multiple times right if i'm executing the same line of code twice then this would be printed twice right so this will 1440 would be printed twice so if i do run test you would see that 1440 is being printed twice do not worry about this slash in in here the thing is 1440 is being printed twice what is expected is 1440 is printed only once so those are all the possible mistakes that you might be making when you are solving this specific exercise one additional thing that you would see in here is that you have hints and also you have solution explanation in here once you click run test a couple of times you can look at the hints as well hints give you additional things on the solution so it says remember that there are 24 hours in a day 60 minutes in an hour use the multiplication operator and the expression should be something of this kind and you can also look at the solution explanation the task requires you to print the number of minutes in a day we know that there are 24 hours in a day and each hour consists of 60 minutes and therefore to find the number of minutes in a day we multiply 24 by 60 and the print function is used to output the result of the operation to the console the thing is over here this specific exercise is pretty simple right so having instructions hints and solution explanation might be a little bit of overkill but as you go further in the course we will get to a lot of complex problems and that's where you would see that instructions hints and solution explanation becomes really really useful i'm sure you're having a wonderful time and i'll see you in the next step it's time for the solution to another python coding exercise you want to print number of seconds in a day in this exercise you are required to write a python program that calculates and prints the total number of seconds in a day there are 60 seconds in a minute 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day your task is to calculate the total number of seconds in a day multi by multiplying the number of seconds in a minute the number of minutes in an hour and the number of hours in a day and your program should finally print the result there is no input format and the output should be the result having solved the previous one this should be just a step about that right so if you look at the number of hours in a day it's 24 in each of these hours you have 60 minutes and in each of these 60 minutes you have 60 seconds so this is the value 24 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60 and we would want to print this so we will make use of the print built in function and we will put the expression within parenthesis and you can go ahead and say run test if you do run test in our background our program would run and check if the output is as expected and you can see that this is successful i hope you had a great time solving this exercise and i'll see you in the next step having solved a couple of exercises it's time for another learning lab in this learning lab we would want to explore python built in functions there are a lot of functions which are built in in python built in functions are those functions whose functionality is predefined in python do you remember the built in function that we used in the last step yep it is print right what we did was print hello so if i do a print on a piece of text so over here hello is a piece of text because it's included in double quotes and if i do run code what would happen if i do run code this program is executed and the output would be shown to us it's showing hello so print would print whatever text you give it or it can also print numbers right if you say print if you say print 5 for example or pr print 
it would be able to print 500 as well. If you do run code, you would see that hello will be printed on one line and 500 will be printed on the next line. So it can print text, it can print numbers. There are a lot of things that it can print. With the print function, if you actually go in and let's say remove the double quotes. So this hello here is not a number. It's some text, but it's not within double quotes. So what would happen in this case? Let's run code. Oops, it's saying hello is not defined. What does that mean? It's saying hello does not exist or it's not defined. We'll talk a lot more about this when we talk about variables. For enough, the important thing for you to remember is that print can be used to print a piece of text or a number. Let's look at a few more built-in functions, right? The next built-in function that we would look at is absolute ABS. Absolute function returns the absolute value of a specified number. What do we mean by absolute value? For example, if you're saying absolute of 10.5, this returns 10.5. However, if you do absolute of minus 10.5, this will also return 10.5. So the absolute value would actually be positive value. So the absolute function returns the absolute value of a specified number. It is basically the value of the number without accounting for the sign. So even if there's a negative value associated with the number, the absolute will remove the negative value and return only the value. Let's look at an example. So over here, I'll go ahead and say A, B, A. Over here, I'll go ahead and say A, B, S, absolute, open parenthesis, and 10.5. Let's go ahead and say run code. It says run completed, but nothing is printed. Why? Because absolute actually returns a value. What does it return? It returns a value of 10.5. But we are not saying Python to print that value. We need to tell Python explicitly to print that value. How can you tell Python to print that value? You are right. We need to say print and inside print. So print, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. And in between of this is where we will put absolute of 10.5 so i'll remove this comment from here so print absolute of 10.5 so abs and within parenthesis 10.5 and print within parenthesis abs of 10.5 so let's try and run this code right now this code might look a little complex you will get used to it with time you can see that now 10.5 is printed if you want to print the absolute value of minus 10.5, you can put a minus in here and you can run this, run code. What do you expect? Absolute of minus 10.5 is 10.5 again. So you can see that absolute returns the absolute value for a given number. Similar to absolute, you have a lot of other functions in Python. Let's get started with power. Let's say instead of absolute, P-O-W. And over here, what I would say is 2, 5. So over here, you can see that I'm passing multiple values. So a power function accepts two values, 2, 5. And what does it do? It calculates 2 to the power of 5. So basically, 2 multiplied by itself 5 times. And what would be the output? If you do a run code, what do you think will be the output? Yep, it's 32. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. And that is what is printed out here. If you do power of 10, comma 3, it should be easy to guess, right? It should be. thousand. The thing is, in Python, there are two ways you can calculate power. Earlier, if you remember, we used the power operator. What is the power operator in Python? The power function is POW. What is the operator that we looked at to do the power? Print 10 star star 3. Right. So this is the power operator star followed by star so two stars two asterisks 
next to each other is the power operator in python so if i comment this line of code so i'm putting a hash here to say i don't want to execute this code this should be comment and i'm executing this what you what do you think will be the output the output will not change at all the output will be 1000 so you can actually use the power function or the power operator to do the power calculation in python the other two functions that we'll be talking about are max and min max calculates the maximum of the given input values and min calculates the minimum of the given input values for example if i'm taking this piece of code from here what do you think the output would be max of 34 45 67 and i would want to print this as well so i would want to say print of this so print max of 36 45 67 and run code Yep, it returns 67. 67 is the maximum. One thing you need to be careful in here is to make sure that the parentheses match. So this is open parenthesis of the print function and this is the close parenthesis of the print function. You can see that max also has an open parenthesis and a close parenthesis. So you need to have two open parenthesis, two close parenthesis. Make sure that you have all of them in there. If you remove one of these parentheses and say run code, what would happen? You can see that it says parenthesis was never closed. So it gives you a syntax error. So make sure that you are following the right syntax. We would want to print the value which is returned by the max function call. And the values which we are passing into max function call are 34, 45, 67. This would return 67 back and print function would print 67. Now, similarly, you also have a min function. So if uh, instead of min, instead of max, I'm typing in min in here and if I do a run code what do you think will be the output it should be easy to guess right it should be 34 so what we are looking at right now are some of the built-in functions in Python we started with the print function which prints a value or a piece of text to the console whatever you are seeing in here is the console output we also saw absolute function which returns the absolute value of a specified number at the end, we also looked at functions which accept multiple inputs. To the power, we can pass in two inputs, 2 and 5, 2 to the power of 5, 10, 3, 10 to the power of 3. We also looked at max function to which you can pass in any number of values. You can pass in three values or you can also pass in five values. For example, this min function, instead of passing in three values, you can also pass in more number of values. So I can say this. 34, 45, 67, 1, 0 and I can say run code. What do you think will happen? Yep, the value would be 0 because this is the minimum among them. right? You might have negative values. If I have negative 67, minus 67 in here, what will be the output if I do run code? Guess it? Yep, you are right. It should be minus 67 because this should be the least of the values which are present in here. So these are some of the built-in functions in Python. As we go further in the course, we will look at a lot of other built-in functions. For now, let's focus on the terminology. This entire thing that we have in here, right? So we are having a print min of a specific thing. This is called a statement. So a statement can be complex like this or a statement can be simple like this, right? So print of five. This is also a statement. So print of five over here is a statement. Statement is nothing but a unit of code that the Python interpreter can execute. So print of five is a statement. What is this statement doing? This statement is making a call to a inbuilt function called print. And that's why this is also called function call. Over here we are calling single function and over here in the first line we are actually calling two functions first we are calling the min function we want to find the minimum of the number once we find the minimum of the number we will want to call the print function to print the value to print the calculated value to the console the value that is provided to a function when a function is called is called the argument over here 5 is the argument what are the arguments to the min function 
we have five arguments for the main function right 34 45 minus 67 1 0 all the values that you are passing in to a function are called its arguments over here for the print function we just have a simple argument 5 over here for the main function we have a lot of arguments which are passed in so what we are talking about over here is the terminology whenever you are getting started with programming you need to understand the terminology which is typically used when you are talking with other programmers you want to make use of the terminology and that's why it's very very important to understand the terminology it's now time for a fun fact do you know python has been to space yes nasa uses python extensively for its space exploration projects so when you are coding in python you are in stellar company isn't that fun i'm sure you had a great time doing this learning lab remember that challenges help us to learn and get better mistakes are just stepping stones to learning so don't really worry about getting things wrong even if you are not able to solve a few exercises don't really worry focus on learning how to solve these exercises focus on understanding the mistakes you are making focus on getting better each exercise try and get better each learning lab try and learn a few things all these will make you a really good programmer i'm sure you're having a wonderful time and i'll see you in the next step it's time for the solution for a specific exercise python coding exercise calculate absolute value in this exercise your task is to write a python program that calculates and prints the absolute value of minus 100 so the absolute value of minus 100 is 100 absolute value of 100 is also 100 so there are no inputs for this specific task the output should be a single integer absolute value of minus 100 which is 100 we also have instructions in here to help you to solve the problem the thing is this should be pretty simple based on the earlier learning lab right the way you can calculate the absolute value is by using the absolute built-in function in python so i can say absolute and within parenthesis i can put minus 100 will this give me the will this give me the required output will this print it to the console the task requires me to print the absolute value of 100 calculating it is not sufficient i also need to print it if you for example just write this piece of code and if you'd say run tests what would happen you'd see that you would get an output it says hey the output is empty but i'm expecting 100 as the output so you can see it in here your output is empty expected output is 100 and it says please print the absolute value of minus 100 let's go ahead and do that so how do we print it so within print so print open parenthesis close parenthesis within that i would need to put absolute of minus 100 isn't it easy let's go ahead and run tests right now congratulations on passing the tests i'm sure you're having a wonderful time and i'll see you in the next exercise welcome to the solution of another coding exercise python coding exercise calculate power of a number let's see the solution for this specific exercise in this exercise you are required to write a python program that calculates and prints the result of two raised to the power of eight and we gave a few hints in here as well the power function in python accepts two arguments and returns the first argument raised to the power of the second argument there are no inputs for this specific task and the output should be a single integer the result of 2 raised to the power of 8 which is 256 it should be easy right power of 2 comma 8 and we want to print the value of it so print of power of 2 comma 8 so if you want you can use spacing in here and say run test okay all your tests are succeeding congratulations at the start of the course we are keeping the exercises really really simple you'd see that as we go further in the course we will make the exercises a little bit more complex i'm a great believer that a few initial successes will help you to focus and learn fast i'm sure you're having a wonderful time and i'll see you in the next step 
Welcome to the first set of puzzles in this specific course. At regular intervals in this course, we would have a lot of puzzles helping you to play with code and try and guess the output of a piece of code. And this is our first puzzles lecture where we would be playing with built-in functions. Let's get started with exploring a few puzzles related to built-in functions. Most of these should be easy to guess what the output should be. So print 5 multiplied by 6. This is just printing a text, a piece of text. So it should be very, very easy to guess what the output for this should be. It just prints 5 into 6. This is the same as this. 5 into 6 within single quotes. So you can either use single quotes or double quotes to delimit your text or strings. And if you run code, you'd see that the output for this is also 5 multiplied by 6. Now, next, this is 5 multiplied by 6, but there are no double quotes. What will be the output? It should be easy to guess. The expression 5 into 6 is evaluated. 6 and 5 are operands. Star is the operator. And we are calculating the value of the expression and printing it. So that should be pretty easy. The next one is absolute of 10.5. We have a space in here. What will be the output if you do a run code for this? You'd see that you would get an error. Because when you're making a function call, you need to actually have parenthesis. And let's say now, I would call it this way. Absolute of 10.5. However, we are making use of text. We are putting it in a string. Let's do a run code. What will be the output you would expect? It should be easy to guess you would get an error because absolute function will only work on floating point values or numeric values. It cannot be a string. Next, let's pass absolute of 10.5. So this is a positive value. So it will be printed as is. If you do a run code, you'd see that 10.5 would be printed as is. Oops, we did not add a print. So let's add a print and print it. Let's do a run code you'd see that it's printing 10.5. Next, power of 2 comma 5. So you want to send two parameters to a power function. We want to send two values to the power function. How can we do that? If you do a run code like this, it would give you an error. Even this piece of code in here, 2, 5. This also will give you an error. Both of these are not the right syntax. The current syntax, the correct syntax is power of comma 5. So you need to put a comma in here and now you can say print of this to print this value. If you do a run code right now, you'd see 32 being printed. 2 to the power of 5, 2 multiplied by itself 5 times which is 32. Next, let's print this, print hello world. This should be easy to guess. Print hello world. Over here we have a 0 and therefore it will be printing hell zero world isn't it what is printed here yep next next one is a little tricky so pause the video in here and try to guess the output for it so hello is followed by a double quote and there is another double quote what will happen if you do run code you would see that you would get an error why would you get an error because it's saying unterminated string literal if you'd want to have a double quote, when you are delimiting the string by double quotes as well, in that case, you'd need to actually add a slash in here. So this is a backward slash. You need to have a backward slash followed by the double quote. So this sequence in here is called an escape sequence, a backward slash followed by double quote. Now, if you do a run code right now, you'd see that hello double quote is printed. You can see that hello double quote is now printed. Now, there are a number of other escape sequences as well. Let's quickly run through a few of them. So I'll take the next four statements and I'll run them. What I would recommend you to do is to try and guess the output for them. So you can see that the first one is actually resulting in printing things on two lines. Hello world. This is because slash n, this escape sequence is called new line character. So slash n is a new line character. And slash t, if you look at it here, this is how it's printed. So this is having a tab in between. So hello tab world. So slash t represents tab character. And if you want to print single slash, you need to say 
two slashes. Slash is escape and next is the actual character. So you would print hello slash world. And the last one, you can try and guess what the output for that is. Right? So you have six slashes. So this is first combination which prints a slash. Next again, another escape sequence with a slash. Another escape sequence with a slash. So it prints this. So it prints three slashes in the output. Isn't that interesting? The last two in here, let's go ahead and execute them as well. These are where we are making use of single quote. So the thing is, if you're using single quote, you can use double quote inside the string. What's the output? The output is hello double quote. So when you are using the single quote as a delimiter, you can use double quotes inside without needing an escape sequence. And the same is the case here. We are using double quotes as the delimiter and inside the text we are and inside the text we are making use of single quote. So, what did we learn in this set of puzzles? We learned about the escape sequences. Slash n is new line. Slash t is tab. And slash slash double slash would actually print a single slash. These are used to insert special characters into a string. We saw how to use an escape sequence to insert a double quote in a string which is delimited by double quotes. And at the end, we also saw an example of the best practice. If the string literal contains one or more single quotes, then you can use double quotes to enclose it. So this string literal contains single quote. So what we are doing in here is to use double quotes to enclose it. However, if the string contains one or more double quotes, if you have double quotes in the string, then it is recommended to use single quotes as the delimiter. You can use single quotes to enclose this string. I'm sure you had a great time doing these puzzles. I will see you in the next step. Next exercise, find the maximum number. In this exercise, your task is to write a Python program that determines and prints the maximum number among three, seven, and five. This must be one of the most easiest things for you to solve, right? Earlier we looked at minimum, we looked at absolute values, and now we are looking at max, right? So max of three comma seven comma five, right? We have three numbers in here. We will separate them by commas and we want to print it. So print open parenthesis and make sure that you add in a close parenthesis. And that's all, right? So let's go ahead and say run tests. Fingers crossed. I hope everything succeeds. Yep, your code passed this test. Isn't this awesome? So what we are doing in here is we are making use of the max function. Max function is used to find the largest item between two or more parameters. Two or more values which are passed in here, we want to find the maximum value and we are printing it out. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you again in the next step. Let's quickly summarize what we have learned in this specific section. We talked about built-in functions. Built-in functions are functions which are built into Python. These are provided for you for free. We explored a number of built-in functions. We talked about print. We talked about absolute. We talked about power. We talked about how to find maximum of a set of numbers and minimum of a set of numbers. We also talked about basic math operations. We understood how to do multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, exponentiation. That's basically the power operator and reminder operator. What is a reminder when you divide a number by another number? We also looked at text. Whenever you talk about programming, typically text is present within single quotes or double quotes. And in Python, both are separated. You can put your text in single quotes or double quotes. We also understood some of the important concepts. We talked about expression. This whole thing here, 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 50. This is an expression. Inside this, star is an operator. It's the multiplication operator. And 5, 4, and 50, these are called operands. 5, 4, and 50, these are what are called operands. These are also called literals because these are constant values. These values do not change. We understood what is a statement. A statement is nothing but a unit of code that Python interpreter can execute. For example, if you say print 5 or print hello world, that's a statement. We also understood what we mean by calling a function. For example, you have a built-in function. You'd want to call that specific function. You'd want to invoke it or initiate a function by making use of its name 
and parenthesis. For example, if you want to call the print function, you would have print and within parenthesis, you would send the values you would want to send. And we talked about argument. Argument is nothing but a value provided to a function when called. When I'm, when I'm calling the print function, I'm passing a value 5. 5 is an argument. So in the last section, you got a chance to play with a lot of Python code. And we understood a lot of Python concepts as well. If you are confused about any of these concepts, do not worry. We will continue playing with them in the next sections as well. I'm sure you're having a great learning experience and I'll see you in the next section. Until then, here's bye from Ranga at In 28 Minutes. Welcome to this new section, Introduction to Variables and Assignment. In this section, we will learn the fundamentals of variables. We will understand why it is very, very important to name variables accurately. We will also understand that variable names are case sensitive. We will also understand assignment. How can you assign values? And also how you can use expressions for assignment. We will also practice updating the values of the variables based on the current values. In addition, we will get a lot of hands-on experience using a lot of coding exercises related to variables. Are you excited to learn about variables and assignment? I will see you in the next step. Welcome to this learning lab on introduction to variables. In this learning lab, let's dive into the world of variables. The variables are the places where you would store values when you are writing programs. In this learning lab, let's learn how you can define variables, how you can assign values to variables and play around with variables. Let's get started. Let's get started with defining a variable, creating your first variable. How do you create a variable? Creating a variable is very, very simple. You give it a name. So the name of the variable I'm creating is count. And I'm saying count is equal to four. So this is what is called declaring or defining or initializing or creating a variable. Once you create a variable, so here we are defining a variable and assigning a value to it. We are saying the value of count is four. Once you have a variable, you can print the value of variable or make use of it. So over here, let's use print count. Let me get the parenthesis right. So it's print and I have a open parenthesis within which I am putting the name of the variable count and putting in the close parenthesis. What do you think will be printed? If I run this, fingers crossed, yep, it's printing four, which is the value of the variable. So if I put, let's say count is equal to 10, what would be printed when I do a print count? I can go ahead and run this, run code. Let's see what would be the output. It's printing 10. Now, why is this called a variable? The reason why this is called a variable is that the value of the variable can change over the period of the runtime of the program. So over here, the value of the count is 10. If I want to make count as 12, I can do that as well. So I can say count is equal to 12. So I can actually print count here. So count is equal to 10, print count. When this is executed, the value of the count would be 10. After that, what we are saying is count is equal to 12. We are setting a value of 12 and then we are saying print count. Let's run this and see what happens. 10 and 12. So over here, the value which is printed is 10 and over here, the value which is printed is 12. Count is called a variable because its value can change over a period of time. One very, very important thing to remember is that if you actually put double quotes around count. So when I'm printing, I'm doing a printing, open parenthesis. However, I'm putting count within double quotes and then doing a close parenthesis. What do you think will be printed? Will it be count which is printed or will it be text which is printed? Let's see what happens. I will actually go ahead and comment the next two lines of quotes. I'll comment these two and I would say run code. What would happen? It's printing count. It's not printing the value of count, but it's actually printing the text.
count. If you want the value of count, you should not have double quotes in here. And you should print count. And when I say run code, it will print 10. Whenever you're writing a program, you need to be concerned about unassigned variables. What are unassigned variables? Variables for which you haven't assigned values yet. For example, in this program, we do not have a value for num. So if I go ahead and say, instead of print count, print num. What is num? We have not defined it yet. So it's an undefined or an unassigned variable. And if I go ahead and run code right now, what would you get? I'm trying to print num, but I've not told what num is. And that's why there's an error. It says name num is not defined. You can only use variables which have been previously defined. Count has been defined. So I can go ahead and say print count, but num or number has not been defined. So I cannot make use of them. So that's number one. Watch out for unassigned variables or undefined variables. Next, it's very, very important to remember that case matters when it comes to variable names. What do I mean? If let's say over here, I go and say print count with a capital C. So I've defined count with small c in here. Over here, I'm saying count with capital C. And I say run code. What do you think will happen? Oops, it says name count is not defined. If you'd want to create a new variable with a different value, count is equal to 20, that's possible. So now this count will be pointing to this value, which is 20. So count will be printing the value 20. If I do run code right now, what do you expect to happen? You'd see 20 being printed in here. So variable names are case sensitive. So whenever you're using variables, make sure that you're using the same case. Next, let's move on to naming rules. How can you name variables? Your variable names should start with a letter or an underscore. From the second character onwards, you can use numbers. So think about this. I'll give you a few variable names. You need to think whether they are are allowed or not. So underscore count is equal to 30. One count is equal to 15. And count one is equal to 15. C1 is equal to 15. Which of these variable names are allowed? Think about it. So the rule is your variable names must start with a letter or an underscore. So the letter can be caps or small. There are no constraints around it. So, so if you look at all these variable names, except for one C-O-U-N-T, this one, the name is starting with a numeral, a number, and this is not allowed. So except for this, all others would compile. So if I do a run code right now, we are not printing the values of all the variables, but you would see that line four has an error invalid decimal literal. So it's saying one count. Nope. Variable name should not start with one count. If you'd want, you can call it count two or count three or whatever you'd want to. So if you run the code right now, all the values will not be printed because we are not printing all the values, but you would see that the code would run successfully. So your variable names should start with a letter or an underscore. From the second character onwards, you can use numbers. So this is not allowed. One count is equal to five is not allowed. However, these are allowed. C, one, two, three, four, five is equal to five. Underscore count is equal to five. These are allowed. A quick tip is whenever you create a variable name, make the variable name descriptive. Make sure that the variable name indicates what value the variable contains, what data the variable contains. You would see that as your programs become bigger and bigger, having good variable names make your program easier to understand. Let's now switch our attention to some of the terminology. Over here, what we are doing is we are creating or declaring or defining a variable with the name count. 
so that is what is declaring or defining or creating a variable giving a variable a name and an initial value so over here we are saying the name of this variable is count and the initial value is 10 the next terminology is assignment so over here we are assigning a value of 10 to count this is what is called assignment so this specific statement does declaration definition or creation and also it assigns a value if you would actually let's say on the next line say count is equal to 23 so over here in this line we are declaring defining creating variable assigning value because the variable is already there by this line this line will be assigning a value of 23 to count so these are some of the important terminology that you need to remember defining declaring or creating a variable and assigning a value to the variable now let's try a practice so what i would recommend you to do is to create a variable number and assign it a value of 5 and print the value of number it should be pretty easy i can remove all this code and it should be number is equal to 5 print number so this should be pretty easy thing for you to do so if i do run code right now oops i have an error yep i have a typo in here it should be number so let's go ahead and fix that and run code Ooh, that's good so print number that's cool let's now try a few things so few things to try let's get started with the first thing think of a variable as a box what does that mean let's have a box in here let's say there is a box called i when the program starts there is nothing in the box the box is not even created when i write i is equal to one a box called i is created and the value of the box becomes one let's say next line i do i is equal to two now what would happen to the value in the box the value in the box becomes two so one will be overridden by two if i say i is equal to three what would happen the value of the box changes this becomes three now so think of variable as a box as you execute each line of code the value in the box will be replaced with the most recent value that is assigned so if i go here and print the value of i what is the most recent value which is assigned into i it is three the box i contains the value three and that's why what is the value which is printed the value which will be printed is three let's go ahead and run code cool the value which is printed over here is three so always think of variables as boxes if there are multiple variables so j let's say is equal to two then you'll have multiple boxes so i have a box i i have a box j so at the end of line two j will have a value of two at the end of line four let's say at the end i actually assign it a value of five so at the end of line six j will have a value of five so each variable is like a box and each box contain its own values so at the end of line two we would have i and j with values one and two respectively at the end of line three the value of i will become two and the j will remain at the end of line 4 i will become 3 at the end of line 5 j will have a value of 5 so if i do a print i here and print j here what do you think will be the output the latest values which are assigned are 3 and 5 so you'd see that 3 and 5 are the values which are printed so the thing to remember is the best way to visualize variables is to think of them as boxes the next thing you need to remember is the fact that you can assign different types of data to variables like strings or text and numbers and what we'll do is we'll try and assign values and print them so let's say i remove all this code and i say name is equal to john doe so this is a, a text a piece of text right we are putting it with it we are putting it within double quotes this is a piece of text this is also called a string so a string represents a piece of text 
So a variable can contain a piece of text as well. So now what does the name contain? Name contain John Doe. So if I do print name, what do you think will happen? If I run code, fingers crossed. Yep, John Doe. Make sure that you have double quotes in here. So if you have proper double quotes in here, then the name that will be printed is John Doe. Over here, this thing which is at the end of it is a comment because we have a hash in here. If you have a hash, whatever is after that becomes a comment. So name is equal to John Doe, print name would print John Doe. Similar to earlier, let's say I would want to assign an age. So age is equal to 30, print age will print John Doe's age. So what would be printed? 30 would be printed. So you can assign a text to a variable, a number to a variable, and you can also de assign decimal values. So height is equal to 5.9. This is a decimal value. So print height and say run code. What would now be printed? Think about it. Yep, John Doe 30 and 5.9. So variables can be assigned different types of values. There are a lot of other value types. We will be talking about them a little later in the course. But for now, the important takeaways are you can assign values to variables. Think of variables as a box and you can have variables having different types of data present in them. Let's now get to the fun fact. Python was designed with readability in mind. You can see that the syntax of Python is pretty simple. That's the reason why Python is the first programming language learned by most people. It's like the plain English of coding languages. If you have written code in other languages, you would see that typically Python code is the most easiest to read. I'm sure you are having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. Welcome to this coding exercise, creating and printing variables. Problem statement, create a variable name distance, assign a value 100 to it and then print it. This task does not require any input. The output should solely be an integer representing the value stored in the distance variable, which is 100. So as you can see, your task in this exercise is straightforward. You're required to create a variable named distance, assign a value 100 to this variable, and finally print the value stored in a distance variable. This should be a pretty easy exercise to complete, right? So you'd want to create a variable called distance and assign a value of 100. And you would also want to be able to print the variable. So distance is equal to 100, print distance. And let's do run tests to see if our output is as expected. You can see that your code has passed this test. In the last step, we created a number of variables, assigned values and printed them. This is very, very similar to that. Let's quickly look at the notes. In Python, variables can be thought of as containers, as boxes that store data values. They can be of any type. You can have integers, basically natural numbers. You can have floating point numbers, basically decimal values, for example, 5.25, 3.2. You can have strings, that's basically text values. You can have list of values. A little later, we'll be looking at list of values as well. By using the assignment operator, you can assign a value to a variable. Once a value is assigned to a variable, you can use it elsewhere in your program, including printing it out using the print function. So we are assigning a value here and we are making use of the value of the variable in here. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next exercise. Welcome to the solution of next coding exercise. Understanding case sensitivity in Python variables. In Python, variables are case sensitive. Your task in this exercise is to demonstrate this feature. Create two variables speed and speed. The first variable speed is using lower cases and the second variable speed is using upper cases. You want to assign values 50 and 60 respectively and then print the value of speed. This should be a pretty easy task for you to complete, right? So speed is equal to 50 and speed with uppercase S, this should be assigned a value of 60 and then we would want to print the value of speed. Cool. Let's do run test. Let's see what would happen. Fingers crossed. Perfect. 
you can see that the test succeeds. Let's quickly look at the nodes. In Python, variable names are case sensitive, which means speed and speed. Speed with lower cases and speed with upper cases are treated as two different variables. So this speed and this speed are two different variables. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. Welcome back. Creating these exercises and maintaining them over a period of time is a lot of effort. But we think it's worth it because it gives you the practice. So let's get started with another coding exercise. Variable names starting with an underscore in Python. Python allows variable names to start with an underscore. Demonstrate this feature by creating a variable underscore count and assigning it a value of 100. Then print the value of underscore count. So this should be again a pretty easy exercise for you to complete. So underscore count is equal to 100. And we want to print the value of it. Print underscore count, print underscore count. And let's do run test. Cool. The test passes. The last few exercises were pretty simple. In the next step, we will learn a few very, very important concepts. And then we would get to a few more complex exercises. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. Welcome back. In this learning lab, let's play with assignment in Python. In one of the last steps, we got introduced to what assignment is. Python uses is equal to symbol for assignment. In this specific learning lab, what we will do is we will look at how variable assignment works in Python and we'll also look at a few variations around it. Let's get started with the basic assignment. We know how to assign a value to a variable, right? i is equal to 5. This would declare the variable, define the variable or create the variable and then assign the value of 5 to it as well. So i is equal to 5 assigns the value of 5 to the variable i. Now, you can also assign the value of one variable to another variable. Let's say i has a value of i. I can go here and say j is equal to i. What does this do? This would actually take the value of i and put it into j. So this assigns the value of i to j. So what do you think will be the output if I actually do print j? So if I do print j, what do you think will be the value? Fingers crossed. Yep, it's 5. So i has a value of 5 and I am assigning j is equal to i. So what happens is the value of i gets copied into the value of j. Earlier, I told you to start thinking of variables as boxes. So when this line gets executed, a box i gets created. And what is the value of i in the box? It would be 5. And next, we are creating a variable j and assigning a value of i. So a variable j, a box j would be created. And what would the value which would be put in the box? I'm saying take the value of i. So j will also have the value of 5. So whatever value is in i gets copied into j. Now, let's say oh, after this, I go and change the value of i to 7. What would happen? The value of the box i gets changed to 7. But the value of box j will remain at 5. So you need to read it line by line. i is equal to 5. So i box is created with value 5. j is equal to i. j box is created and i value is copied into j. i is equal to 7. i box has a new value. The value is 7. So if you actually print i and j at this point. So print i, print j. What would be the values which would be printed? Should be easy to guess. Right, whatever is the value in the box. So 7 and 5. That's the value which would be printed. So first we are printing the value of i, which is 7, j, which will have a value of 5. So what we are talking about is the fact that you can assign values directly to variables or you can copy values from another variable into a variable as well. And you can make it even more complex. You can use expressions in assignments. Earlier we looked at as earlier we looked at expressions, right? For example, 
I have a value I would want to print. So let's say I would want to print i plus 10. So over here, i plus 10 is an expression. This has two operands, i and 10. And there is an operator plus the entire thing in here is called an expression. You can use expressions to assign values as well. Over here, instead of saying j is equal to i, I can say j is equal to i plus 5. So what would happen? i is assigned a value of 5. j will be having a value of i plus 5. I will have a value of 5. So 5 plus 5, which is 10. So 10 will be assigned into j. Let's remove this and let's actually print i and j in here. So let's print i, print j and say run code. What do you think will be the output? Yep, i has a value of 5, but j will have a value of i plus 5, 5 plus 5, which is 10. Over here, we are looking at an example of 2 into i. So instead of doing i plus 5, I can also do 2 asterisk i. So 2 multiplied by i. And what would the value of j will not change, right? 2 multiplied by 5 is again 10. So it would print 5 and 10 again. So what you are talking about is the fact that the right hand side of the is equal to operator. So is equal to operator has a left hand side and a right hand side. The right hand side of a is equal to operator can also be an expression. It can be a variable, it can be a number, or it can also be an expression. The expression will be evaluated first and its result will be assigned to the variable. So j is equal to 2 into i would assign the value of the expression 2 into i to j. And when, do, when we do print j, it outputs 10. A very, very important concept to remember is that the is equal to symbol in programming is a little different from is equal to symbol in mathematics. In programming, is equal to symbol does not denote equality as in mathematics, but it actually represents assignment. In mathematics, if I'm saying i is equal to j, it's almost saying i and j are the same. However, when it comes to programming, i is equal to j means take the value of j and put it into i. So, what happens is whatever values in j will be copied into i. Let's say j has a value of 15 at this particular point in time. Then whatever value is in j, 15, will get copied into i. So is equal to in programming represents assignment. So you need to rewire your brain a little bit. Think of is equal to as assignment. Whatever is on the right hand side gets copied into the variable on the left hand side. If it's an expression, it gets evaluated and the value is copied into the variable on the left hand side. However, very, very important thing to remember is that you cannot do something like this. So 5 is equal to i. This is not allowed because the value of i cannot be copied into a constant. 5 is a constant. So you cannot copy the value of right hand side into left hand side. And that's why this is not allowed. If you do a run code right now, what do you get? you get error, cannot assign to literal here. So you can assign, you cannot assign a value to a literal. A literal is a constant. Five here is a literal. Literal means constant. You cannot assign a value to a constant. Next, let's look at assignments involving operations. What do I mean? Let's get rid of all this code and put this in. Num1 is equal to five num2 is equal to 3. What I can do is I can create a variable back. What I can do is I can create a variable sum. In sum, I would want to calculate the num1 plus num2 and have the value of that in sum. So how can I do that? Sum is equal to num1 plus num2. So basically, we are performing an operation and assigning the value to sum. And I can print the value of sum. Let's do run code. What would happen? 8 is printed. So this is what we are doing in here. You can perform operations in your assignments, such as adding two variables together. 
remember this should always be on the right hand side so on the right hand side you can have a operation so num1 is equal to 5 num2 is equal to 3 sum is equal to num1 plus num2 this would add num1 and num2 and assign the result to sum so the num1 plus num2 calculation would be performed value is assigned to sum num1 and num2 will remain 5 and 3 there will not be any change in their values the only thing which will change is the value of sum which would be num1 plus num2 which would be 8 so this would be printing a value of 8 now you can make this a little bit more complex as well you can have even more complex expressions so let's say a is equal to 5 let's say b is equal to 6 and c is equal to 7 and sum is equal to a plus b plus c this is allowed and this is fun as well if you do print right now or if you would actually run the code right now you would get a value of 18 so 5 plus 6 plus 7 is 18 so sum is equal to a plus b plus c what does it do it adds a b and c and assigns the result to sum next let's look at updating a variable value based on its current value isn't that interesting what do we mean you would see code like this very very frequently index or i is equal to oops let me get this right index is equal to zero index is equal to index plus one you'd see code like this a lot of times when you are doing programming when you go to any real code and see you'd see code like this what does this do let's do a print of index can you guess what would be the output if i do a run code the value would be 1. Why? Because first this expression is evaluated. Index at this point has a value of 0. So 0 plus 1 which is 1 and it's assigned to which variable? Index itself. So 1 will be assigned to index and the value of index would be printed. Now let's say I do this here. Index is equal to index plus 1 again. So use the box concept right so the, we have a box called index while i'm on line one index is having a value of zero so the initial value will be zero and when we get to line three and execute it index plus one so index current value is zero zero plus one is one one will get assigned back into index so at the end of line three index will have a value of one now over here index will have a value of one on line five so the expression will be evaluated index plus one so one plus one mm, very tough calculation one plus one is two and two will be assigned back into index so index will become two so when we print index here what would be the value you expect let's run it fingers crossed two so you can take the value of a variable and use it to and use it in an expression to assign a value to the same variable so what we are looking at in the specific step is using assignment to manipulate the value of variables we got started with a lot of different things we looked at basic assignment operators we looked at assigning one variable's value to another variable value and we also started playing with expressions using expressions to assign values we also talked about the fact that is equal to symbol in programming means assignment it is different from what it is in mathematics and we also talked about the fact that you can have complex expressions so if you want to calculate some of two variables or some of three variables you can write code like this and assign it to a sum variable at the end we also looked at the fact that you can actually update the value of a variable a current variable using an expression involving the same variable as well now let's do a few things for practice create a variable number with an initial value of 10 it should be easy right it should be number is equal to 10 that's good multiply the value by 5 and print it so number is equal to number into 5 so i want to multiply the value of the number by 5 so number is equal to number into 5 so number into 5 gets calculated and put it into number and then i would want to print the number so what would happen if I run this code? 
Yep, 50 is printed because number is equal to number into 5 would actually calculate this expression first. Number into 5, 10 into 5, 50. 50 will be the value in number. So second, increase the value by 5 and print it. This should be pretty easy, right? Number is equal to number plus 5 and print number. Now, the important thing is what will be the value of number which would be printed in here? Stop the video in here. Try and guess it. Don't see the output. Try and guess it first and then see the output. Yep, it's 55. On this line, the value which will be printed is 50 because number will have a value of 50. 10 into 5, 50. When it comes to this line, number has a value of 50 already. So it has a value of 50. So 50 plus 5 will be done. And over here, we'll be printing a value of 55. The next one is to decrease the value of value by 5 and print it. So I'll, I'm lazy. So I'll copy this and paste it and say number is equal to number minus 5. And I'll print the value of number, which will be 55 minus 5, which will go back to 50, right? That's what we would expect. So 50, 55, 50 would be the output. 50, 55, 50. That's cool. And the last thing which you'd want to do is to divide, right? So number by 5. So 50 by 5, the value should be 10. 50 divided by 5. Let's do run code. Okay. 50, 55, 50, 10.0. When you do a division, the value is a decimal value and that's why it's printing 10.0. So you can see that it's pretty easy to use assignment operator to perform operations and assign values to variables. Now let's get to a fun fact. Do you know in Python, you can perform chained assignment to assign a value to multiple variables simultaneously. Let's say I would want to create variables x, y and z all with the value 10. I can do x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to 10. So what would happen is all x, y, z would get a value of 10. Let's try this. So if you do print x, print y and print z. z and y. Run code. Nice. All of them have 10, 10, 10. So this is a handy shortcut. So the, the fun fact over here is that you can assign multiple variables with the same value in a single line. I'm sure you're having a great time doing all these learning labs. A very, very important thing to remember is that regularly review what you have learned. How do you remember things for a long time? The best solution I have found is to review things once in a while. If I'm learning something today, what I would do is I would try to make a little bit of notes and a few days down the line, I will look at all the notes. I will try and recollect what I have learned. By recollecting, you would connect the neurons in your brain and it helps you to remember things for a long time. So make sure that you regularly review things. If you don't, you can go back and watch the previous videos at a little bit higher speed, maybe 1.5x or 2x and quickly review things. The more you review, the more you remember things and the better programmer you would become. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you again very, very soon. Welcome back. Are you ready to play puzzles with assignment? Let's get started. The first puzzle is this. So you have i is equal to 5, j is equal to 1, print j. What would happen? Let's quickly visualize this as well. So i is equal to 5. What will happen? The value of 5 will be stored into i. So I will have a value of 5. And next, what are we doing? We are saying j is equal to i. So whatever value is in i will be copied into j. And when you say print j, what will be the output? It should be easy to guess. It should print 5. Cool, it prints 5. Next, 5 is equal to j. What will be the output? If you do a run code for this, you should easily be able to guess the output. This is an assignment operator. Left hand side should be a variable. Right hand side should be a expression which results in a value. Over here, we are assigning to a literal and therefore this is not considered to be and therefore it results in an error. Next, let's actually try this exercise. This would be interesting. So x is equal to 10. So let's actually use this x, y and z. 
x is having a value of 10 y is having a value of 3 and z z has x mod y basically the remainder when x is divided by y that should be 1 10 divided by 3 leaves a remainder of 1 so this would be 1 so the first print z should print 1 next we are doing x is equal to x plus y so x is equal to x plus 5 x is equal to x plus y and at this time x has value 10 y has value 3 x plus y 10 plus 3 is 13 so 13 will be calculated and the value will be stored into x so this would become 13 so the value of x at the end will be 13 so let's see what would be printed z would be 1 and x would be 13 cool 1 and 13 that looks pretty good next is using the division integer division operation so a is 10 b is 3 a slash slash is equal to so you can use a compound operator using integer division as well so this is similar to a is equal to a slash slash integer division operation so let's go back to the previous code let's get that right yep and if you run the code right now what will be the output 10 integer division 3 which would leave 3 the quotient is 3 so the output would also be 3 you can see 3 being printed in here that's nice now if for the same program if I actually go ahead and add this b star star is equal to 2 so what does it do b is equal to b to the power of 2 b has a value of 3 so it will have a value of 9 that is printed so it's printing a value of 9 now what I would recommend you to do is to pause the video and try again and try to guess the output of this so a is equal to 6 b is equal to 2 c is equal to a plus b c star is equal to b b star star is equal to a a percentage is equal to 3 now this looks pretty complex so let's go back to a b c and let's remove all the values which are present in here and a is 6 b is 2 and c is equal to a plus b 8 this should be easy now the next things c is equal to c multiplied by b what is c multiplied by b 2 multiplied by 8 is 16 and where are we storing it into we are storing it into c so it would be 16 and next b is equal to b to the power of a so b to the power of a 2 to the power of 6 i know that 2 cube is 8 8 8 64 where are we storing it into we are storing it into so we are storing 64 into b and a mod is equal to 3 so we are doing a is equal to a mod 3 so what is the remainder when a is divided by 3 it's 0 and we are assigning it to a so it will be 0 oops looks pretty complex run the code fingers crossed will we get the output as we expected okay 0 64 and 16 perfect isn't that awesome the other thing you can see in here is you can also print multiple values using print so if you want to print multiple values you can separate them by comma and print them so what did we learn in this specific the first things here are basic we played with assignment and we played basic arithmetic operations with addition modulus and exponentiation after that we played with compound assignment operators plus is equal to minus is equal to star is equal to slash is equal to and we saw these operators as well the first one is the compound assignment operator for integer division next one is for modulus and the last one is for exponentiation so we saw that the compound assignment operator for integer division performs integer division which results in an integer quotient and and the exponentiation compound operator will raise the variable to the given power i'm sure you had a great time watching this set of puzzles what I would recommend you to do whenever you see the puzzles is go ahead and run the tests at the end of the puzzles. The tests here are empty. I mean, you just have a, we just have one sample test which would always succeed. But running this test would tell us that you have completed all the puzzles in this specific lecture. So go ahead, run the tests, and I'll see you in the next step. Welcome back. In this coding exercise, let's look at variable assignment and mathematical operations in this exercise you are required to create the three variables a b and c and assign them values of 10 5 3 respectively your task is to calculate the result of the expression a plus b minus c 
and assign this result to a new variable result. Lastly, print the value of result. So there are no inputs. The output should be a single integer. The result of the expression a plus b minus c, which should be 12. So create three variables, assign them values, calculate the result of the expression and assign it to a new variable result and print the value of result. Let's quickly get that done. This should be pretty simple, right? A is equal to 10. So A is equal to 10. I can leave spaces on either side of is equal to. You can write code like this as well, but I like code like this. So A is equal to 10. B is equal to 5. And C should be 3. And next, we would want to calculate the result of the expression a plus b minus c and assign this result to a new variable result. So result is equal to a plus b minus c. This looks good. Let's go ahead and run the tests. Fingers crossed. Yep, the test has succeeded. Now one important thing I would want to remind you is about using white space. Over here, if you see I can write code like this, a is equal to 10, b is equal to 5, c is equal to 3. And even here, I can actually put everything in the same line, right? a plus b minus c and print result, everything I can put together. If you go ahead and run this piece of code, you'd see that this also would pass the test. All the tests would be successful. But typically, writing code in this style is little difficult to read. And that's why we introduce a lot of white space in. So we have white space to help us read the code better. I find reading this kind of code really easy. And I would also separate lines of code. So here are all the assignments. Then we are doing an expression. So I would leave an empty line in between. Leave a space on either side of is equal to and on the either side of all the operators. And I would print on the next line. You can see that this code is much more easier on the eye. It's much more easier to read. So if I do run test right now, congratulations. I'll see you in the next step. In this step, let's look at the solution for the coding exercise, updating variable values. In this exercise, you are required to create a variable counter and assign it a initial value of zero. Next, increase the value of counter by five and print the updated value of counter. No inputs as usual. The output should be a single integer, the updated value of counter, which is five. So the instructions are to create a variable counter, assign it an initial value of zero, increase the value of counter by five, print the updated value of counter using the print function. It should be pretty easy, right? So make sure that you are writing code giving good amount of white space. That's the best practice always. So counter is equal to zero. Next, we would want to do counter is equal to counter plus five and print the value of counter. Looks good. I guess so. Let's run the test and check if it's as expected. Perfect. This looks pretty good. This should be a pretty easy exercise for you to solve. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. I hope you are having a great time solving these exercises and it's time for me to look at the solution for another coding exercise, variable assignment and expression evaluation. The problem statement is in this exercise, your task is to create two variables X and Y assign them values of six and three respectively, then create a new variable result and assign it the outcome of the expression. A little complex expression is in here. So within parentheses, you have X multiplied by Y and it's added to within parentheses Y divided by X. And finally, we would want to print the value of result. As usual, no inputs. The output format would be a single number with decimal value. Why is the result decimal? Because I think there is this division involved in here. So the result will be a decimal value and it would be 18.5. So create two variables X and Y, assign values 6, 3 respectively, create a new variable result 
assign it a value of expression and then print the value of result. Let's do that. So x is equal to 6, y is equal to 3 and result is equal to x multiplied by y plus y divided by x. So this looks good and print of result. Let's try and run the test. Fingers crossed. Everything successful? Yep. Everything's successful. In Python, you can create complex expressions involving multiple variables and operations. The expression x star y plus y divided by x includes multiplication, division, and addition as well. It's also making use of parentheses. Right? You have an open parenthesis, closed parenthesis, open parenthesis, and closed parenthesis in here. And whenever we have a complex expression like this, what happens is the expression in the parentheses will be evaluated first. So x star y would be evaluated first, y divided by x will be evaluated next, and then the results are added in. So 6 multiplied by 3 is 18, and y by x is 3 by x, which is 0.5. So 18 plus 0.5, which is 18.5, which will be the result which the test checks for. In the last few steps, we have learned a lot of new concepts. Until now, we have several exercises to test the understanding of your concepts. All these concepts that you have learned will help you in creating amazing programs in the next section. In the next section, you would see that there are a lot of wonderful things that you would do with the for loop. And all the concepts that you have learned in this specific section would help you do that very, very easily. I'm sure you're having a wonderful time and I'll see you in the next step. You are having a dream. In your dream, you're doing a course where you are writing a lot of Python code. You are having a lot of fun learning to program with Python. You're solving almost 200 Python coding exercises. You're solving hundreds of Python puzzles. And all this right in your browser. Yes, that's right. You do not need an IDE. You do not need to even install Python on your local machine. You can learn Python right in your browser. You don't need to dream about that anymore. This is the course where you'll learn Python by solving almost 200 Python coding exercises right in the browser. I am Ranga Karnam. I am the founder of In 28 Minutes and creator of some of the world's most popular courses on programming, cloud and DevOps. I am certified on multiple clouds and I have helped more than a million learners around the world acquire new technology skills. Rest assured, you are in great hands. Python is one of the top programming languages today. Python is used to build web applications, machine learning applications, data engineering applications and a lot more. In this course, you will learn to program with Python from zero. I am a great believer that the best way to learn is by doing and we designed this course to be hands-on. You will learn Python with almost 200 learning labs and coding exercises. We will be using the Udemy Python coding exercise platform to write and execute Python code. So you don't need anything other than the browser installed on your machine to learn from this course. Programming is a lot easier to learn if you see it as a fun activity. And that's what we would want to enable during this course. Help you have fun with programming. We will take a hands-on, step-by-step approach. By the end of the course, you will know everything to start your journey to be a great Python programmer. Are you ready to become an expert on Python? What are you waiting for? Join me on this exciting journey right now. I will see you in the course.